Soon after I came in as dean, we trademarked the phrase, many species, one medicine. Um, and now we even talk about One Health and global One Health. And it's a short phrase that really encompasses an enormous amount of infectious diseases that are spread among us, but they may be cancer, um, immune diseases, allergies, uh, even some behavioral disorders, neurodegenerative disorders. Not that your dog has Alzheimer's, but um, there are a lot of similar disorders. So when we understand medicine fundamentally, we usually can understand it in ways that all the species benefit. We work very closely with the medical doctors in the medical school, which is now the Perlman School of Medicine. Um, and we do work together that helps animals and people all together to live happier, healthier lives. <coughs> States fund veterinary medicine, and a lot of people don't understand that veterinarians are much more than the person you love who take care, takes care of your dog and cat. We are people who love dogs and cats, but veterinarians are also really the profession that stands between all of humanity and plague and famine. By which I mean that the diseases that spread in humans, almost all the new diseases come from animals originally. So people are familiar with avian flu, swine flu, but AIDS and virtually every new disease, monkey pox, um, come from animals originally. So preventing new diseases in people, it's really crucial that we have well-trained animal care professionals. So that's the plague part. The other thing is that um, we want our food sources to be healthy and safe. Um, animals who produce food should be healthy, that's obviously veterinarians, and also veterinarians play a crucial role in actually making sure the food itself doesn't have bacterial contamination. Um, so it's absolutely crucial for public health and safety that veterinarians be well trained. In Pennsylvania, there's only one veterinary school. It's the veterinary school at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, we're one of the best in the country, there's no question, but we're also one of the oldest. There are only 26 states that have veterinary schools. Two of them have two, so there are 28 veterinary schools. The um, United States doesn't actually have a federal program of support for veterinary medicine at all. So each of those states provides its own support. Um, in Pennsylvania, since agriculture is our number one industry, it's a tremendous advantage to have a homegrown system where our veterinary school at the University of Pennsylvania, we work very well with the, the Pennsylvania State University that has an agricultural school, and we provide new knowledge, we provide direct outreach, we train all the veterinarians, uh, virtually all the veterinarians who practice in Pennsylvania, and we're able to support uh, dairy, which is the number one segment of our number one industry, and maintain health and, uh, in the farmers as well as in the animals. So it's a tremendous advantage to actually have the ability to generate new knowledge, new tests. Um, we support the integrity of racing by testing the winners of, race, of uh, horse races to make sure that they don't have illegal drugs in their system. I'm very aware that uh, public funding is very tight these days and the single uh, words that I say to every legislator that I see and, and every executive is we really understand that you have difficult decisions to make and we're very grateful and appreciative that you understand the value of the veterinary school um, and the funding. And the crucial impact of the veterinary school is to support uh, public health. And so not only everybody's beloved pets, people need the veterinarians to take care of their pets. There's a huge impact on people's well-being. We actually know that the single most common situation that will develop in, in the elderly who are living independently is if their pet gets sick and they can no longer keep it in the home, then they will end up in a nursing home. In four years, veterinarians can do not only every species, and as people often say to us, our patients don't talk, so that adds some difficulty, but we also do all the specialties. Veterinarians graduate in four years as dermatologists, surgeons, internists, behaviorists, nutritionists. Um, we're trained in comparative biology. We're the only profession, we are the profession, that can compare different species and look at diseases in different species. That means, yes, many people will choose to go work, um, take care of people's beloved pets or their very valuable racehorses, but we also can provide enormous knowledge um, when we study diseases, diseases like cancer that exist in virtually all species. We have a very active program in stem cell research. We have one of the uh, founding scientists who founded the entire field that is now stem cell research. Ralph Brinster in our school is the only veterinarian ever to win the National Medal of Science just this year. Um, and the kind of work that we do, because we have such deep knowledge of biology, 
um, really goes across all species and it can, can uh, elevate the quality of life for everyone. Ralph Brinster had, was the first person to figure out how to keep mammalian egg cells alive outside of a, of a body. Um, and that fundamental discovery actually led to the ability to do in vitro fertilization um, and transgenesis, all of the, um, the transgenics that really are the basis of modern science almost, um, come from discoveries that Ralph made. And then in the recent decades, understanding stem cells and this amazing ability that everyone is aware of, that stem cells can develop into any kind of cell type in the body. He's continued every decade of his five decades now of active research to make really fundamental discoveries. We have a moral duty to study our companion animals on this planet. It's a practical issue that our, the animals that uh, serve us and feed us and take care of us be healthy. And it turns out, as he thought at the time, the diseases that affect our dogs, our cats, our cattle are the same diseases that affect, affect us. When, when Dr. Brinster started, his goal, and he's been very generous in saying this in any interview, his goal was to really help the farmer. His agricultural background and his veterinary training, he firmly believes is what gave him the ability to make these advances. And his interest was to make reproduction more efficient and kind of more controllable for agricultural purposes. But when you understand how to um, optimize fertilization and development for a mouse or a dog or a goat, it's all relevant to people as well. Um, and his initial discoveries set the stage for in vitro fertilization. His most recent publications have shown that it's possible to allow boys who've gone through chemotherapy for, for testicular cancer to then reproduce. We all want healthy, safe, affordable food. And veterinarians are absolutely crucial to keeping um, the food supply healthy and also in helping the economic health of the farmers. And we all want local food too, so supporting Pennsylvania farmers for Pennsylvanians is crucial. Veterinarians have an array of roles in the, in the food supply and the one that people would understand the most is direct care of an animal that is sick or preventing animals from getting sick on the farm. Um, but I've been with vets actually go in and test the water on the farm, go in and test the milking machines and make sure that they're advising people to, to run the milking machines so they're the most efficient possible. We can also provide advice in modern farming um, we have information that comes to us by computers from the, the swine production areas, from the um, dairy farms. We get information and we can, our scientists can look at that information and tell them how to modify the feed formulations, modify the additives, maybe change their milking schedule and tremendously increase, again, the animal's well-being, the amount of food that they're getting and also their economics. One of the things that, that Pennsylvanians can be really proud of is the food safety system. And an example is the, the safety of eggs and poultry um, in this state. So over time, as there have been outbreaks of avian flu that affect poultry, um, we've really developed not only great rapid detection ability, but a great partnership with producers so that producers let us know right away if they suspect anything in their flocks. Um, and also the ability to scientifically um, intervene if it looks like there's an outbreak and really stop it in its tracks. And the best example of this, um, we really do lead the nation in the ability to, to implement these, um, these monitoring and then um, uh, intervention abilities. So uh, in the early part of this century, I think 2003, 2004, there was an outbreak, and people know outbreaks don't stop at the border. So it was an outbreak that affected the Northeast, affected Pennsylvania, New Jersey, uh, Virginia. And in Pennsylvania, we were able to detect the outbreak of avian flu and stop it in two weeks. And I think the total cost was about $400,000. The New Bolton Center um, was purchased and developed. And not only is it adjacent to Lancaster County, some of the richest farmland in the, in the United States, but it's also in uh, very rich um, traditional horse country. And what developed there was absolutely pioneering, superb care uh, for performance horses, sport horses, also for people's beloved backyard horses, and absolutely pioneering surgery. Um, so we developed some of the first ability to recover horses in swimming pools so that they wouldn't injure themselves when they're waking up from anesthesia. And when Barbaro came to us, 
Barbaro came not only because his owners live uh, two miles away from New Bolton Center, but also because they knew that we had some of the best equine surgeons in the world and we had some of the best ability to take care of a horse after it's been injured. More recently, we took care of Neville Bardos, who was in a terrible um, barn fire, and he came to us and there was really fear for his life. Um, he was so badly burned, but he was a really valiant horse. And again, we have these amazing teams of people who can take care of these horses around the clock. We have pioneering emergency critical care. Um, and as he recovered, it became pretty clear, not only was he gonna be a comfortable horse, he was gonna compete again. And he's back to his Olympic level of competition. As with Barbaro, the connection people feel to these uh, great animal athletes is really an incredible story. Quite recently, we had a pup come in, a German Shepherd puppy, who had an inborn defect so that his heart vessels wrapped around his esophagus, so his feeding tube, and he really couldn't keep food down. And untreated, this would lead to, to death from starvation. Um, and the surgery used to require opening his chest and doing some big cuts on the vessels. and. You know, for a little pup, it was a lot to go through, very painful, the kind of thing that people would really wonder, am I doing the right thing for my pet? But we have uh, donated by, by very generous individuals, and because of the vision of some of our surgeons, we have a computerized, it's called an OR1, we have a computerized facility that is the envy of human hospitals, and it's the only one like it uh, in the whole world of veterinary medicine. And we have trained specialists who can work as a team. And it looks like a space age facility. Um, and they were able, through tiny incisions, to go into this pup's chest and change the, the abnormal vessels that were constricting his esophagus. The next morning, he was up running around.